Coffee Break German, Season 3, Episode 6. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zurück zu Coffee Break German. Ich bin Marc. Und ich bin Andrea. Wie geht's dir heute, Andrea? Mir ist etwas kalt. Also der Winter kommt, nicht wahr? Ja, das stimmt, er kommt. <lacht> also heute gibt es etwas Neues zu lernen. Ja, das ist richtig, ja. Ich freue mich sehr. Mhm. Mhm. Ich bin ein bisschen aufgeregt. Oh, you're a bit excited, so why? Ja, genau, genau. <lacht> What's today's topic? Wir lernen heute den Genitiv. Ja, ah, finally, finally we're going to be tackling this, this mysterious case, the genitive. Um, why is it that we've left it till now? Is it really difficult? Nein, es ist nicht so schwierig. It's actually not that difficult. It's not more difficult than the other cases. But um, the genitive is just not used that often. Well, I suppose the time has come for our, our German to sound a little more sophisticated and, and smoother, perhaps. Yes, absolutely. That's definitely what the genitive does. Yeah, it elevates your German skills to new levels. <laughs> Let us then elevate our new German, our German skills to new levels. Bist du bereit, Andrea? Ich bin bereit, ja. Also, los geht's. <laughs> So, Mark, let's uh, uh, quickly look at the other cases, mm -hmm. just uh, as a bit of repetition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I wonder if you remember any of these cases that we've already looked at. Well, I'm sure, like our listeners, we, we know that there are nominative, accusative and dative cases in German that we've learned so far. Yes, that's correct. And uh, can you run through again what the cases are for? Yes, so um, the cases tell us if a noun is the subject or if a noun is the object. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if it's the object, then it's about uh, who does what to whom. Okay. Yes, yeah. so it's mm -hmm. to distinguish between the what and the whom. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Just using, with this explanation, I can show you that in English, you probably also had these cases because you have who, whom, and whose, yeah, which would be the genitive for us. Right. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to the genitive in just a moment. Can we just quickly run through, or I, I'm, <laughs> I'm maybe going to regret saying this, but can I quickly run through what I remember of so far with the nominative, accusative, and dative with the definite articles, for example? Yes, that's a very good idea. So do you want to start with the nominative? Okay, so nominative would be, um, I'll, I'll do this masculine, feminine, neuter and plural in that order. So der, die, das, die. Okay, und der Akkusativ? So the accusative, um, I think just one of them changes. That would become den, die, das, die. Genau, sehr gut. Und der Dativ? Right, so this is a little more tricky. I think that's... Dem, der, dem, den. Okay, sehr gut. Bravo. Well done, Mark. So what happens with the genitive? Well, in the genitive, we also change the articles. Masculine singular becomes des. And I'll give you an example. Die Schuhe des Vaters. Right, so the shoes of the father. Mm -hmm. Genau. And uh, feminine singular, and this is the tricky bit, becomes der. Oh, Andrea, <laughs> we're going so well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you an example. Die Schuhe der Mutter. Right, so there's no, because you said die Schuhe des Vaters, and we had an S on the end, but we don't say die Schuhe des Mutters. No. So, um, des Vaters, so with the genitive, masculine and neuter uh, nouns become an S at the end, but not feminine uh, and plural. Yeah, so, die Schuhe des Vaters, mm -hmm. yeah, die Schuhe der Mutter, yeah, yeah, and uh, so, neuter singular is auch des, 
So die Schuhe des Kindes. Die, des Schuhe, no, die Schuhe, die des, Schuhe des Kindes. Kinder, and is that an R at the end as well? Kinders. Kindes. 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 Right. Oh, so it's the child's shoes. Sorry, I thinking. I was thinking. I was thinking the children's shoes, but it's the child's nein, shoes. Nein, nein, ja, Schuhe genau. des Kindes. Ja. Yeah. And plural is auch der die Schuhe der Kinder. Die Schuhe der Kinder. Okay, just coming back to Kindes. So you said die Schuhe des Kindes, not Kinds. You could say kinds, but it's nicer kinders. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you said it was a little bit tricky. Um, I agree. Um, it's not the easiest, okay? But it's also, it's feasible. Because what what is nice about the genitive is that we have, so masculine and neuter singular is this. Mm -hmm. And uh, feminine singular and plural is der. Yeah. Okay, I've got two questions. First of all, hopefully an easier question. Um, what happens with the indefinite articles? Are they like Einus, Einer, Einus? Yeah, sehr good. So that was a good, a good answer. Okay, my second question then is a little more complicated. Could we not say um, die Schuhe von dem Vater? Yes, we can say this, but it's a little bit less sophisticated than die Schuhe des Vaters. And um, basically, if it's a child or it's maybe a, a learner like yourself saying this, then no one bats an eyelid. But if, if I said it, then, uh, you know, people would maybe wonder what happened. <laughs> you know, why is she using this and not the She's nice genitive? She's more sophisticated genitive. than yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to say, though, because... Uh, in Swiss German, in dialect, we don't really use the genitive. Ah, uh, right, okay. So I do actually very often say die Schuhe von dem Vater. Right. Oder die Schuhe vom Vater. Schuhe Vater. vom Vater, <laughs> I would say. And when I'm a bit lazy, uh, then I also translate this, this into standard German. And I just sound very Swiss then. I get you. Okay. However, as you said earlier, we're we're aiming to be a little more sophisticated with our German in this one, and uh, that's why we're going to learn uh, die Schuhe des Vaters. Yeah. Genau, das ist richtig. So, and with the S at the end, unfortunately, there are exceptions. Okay, it's not every masculine uh, noun. So, for example, if it were the shoes uh, of the boy, it would be die Schuhe des Jungen, nicht die Schuhe des Jungens. Okay. okay. And unfortunately, I don't have a rule for you here. So we just have to learn them as, as we mm -hmm. go along. Genau. Okay. You mentioned earlier um, that the different cases are used um, to kind of talk about the objects, the, the, the who and the what and the whom and, and all that. Maybe could you give us like a, a sentence or where, where we're seeing multiple objects in that one sentence? Yes, I can give you an example with f all four cases. Wow, okay. Okay. Franz gibt der Mutter die Schuhe des Vaters. Right, let me just think that through. So Franz gibt die Mutter. Der Mutter. Der Mutter, okay. Die Schuhe des Vaters. Genau. Right, so Franz gibt der Mutter, that's to the mother, that's the yeah. dative. Ja, das ist richtig. So Franz gibt der Mutter, to the mother, die Schuhe, that must be the accusative, because that's, that's what he's giving. Genau. Des Vaters, of the father. Genau, das ist richtig. So Franz is giving his, his mother his father's shoes. Genau, das ist richtig. Okay, can I double check something? If we wanted to replace der Mutter, with his mother, we would say seiner, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if we wanted to replace the des Vaters um, with his father, would, would the same kind of thing happen to seines Vaters? Ja, das ist richtig. So Franz gibt seiner Mutter die Schuhe seines Vaters. Right. Okay. So in that sentence, we, we know what has been given. We know to whom it's been given. And we know to whom the, the shoes belong, the owner of the shoes. 
and it's the owner of the shoes part that's the genitive, it's the uh, to whom part that's the dative, and the what part is the accusative. Genau, das ist richtig. And of course, Franz is in the nominative. Yes. So, and, so what you see is, and this is really where we most often use the genitive. It's to say whose thing it is or whose mother or whose whatever. So to um, indicate possession or belonging. Okay, so if I can just review this for myself. We're talking about the genitive definite articles and they would be des, der, des and der for the plural. Genau, das ist richtig. And the indefinite articles, eines, einer, eines, and of course there's no plural for the indefinite. Mm -hmm. Das ist richtig. And then we have um, also the, the pronouns. Yeah, as you pointed out earlier. So, for example, uh, seines Vaters. Yeah, oder uh, seiner Mutter. Yeah, okay. Die, okay. die Schuhe seiner Mutter. Ja, die Schuhe seines Vaters, ja? They just follow the same pattern as the indefinite article, as, as they would normally do. That is correct, yes. Okay. And then um, what is also uh, quite an easy way where we use the genitive, and I said this before, when we have belonging or possession, is with names. Ja? And we know this from English, and it's almost the same as in English. Yeah, so for example, if we're talking about my shoes, it would be Andrea's Schuhe. But we don't necessarily use an apostrophe in German, yeah. is that right? Not only not necessarily, but we don't use it. But there, there is a situation where we do, I think you told me this, where the name ends in S. Yes, that's correct. So if we have a name, for example, Lars, Lars is a good German name. And uh, if we look at Lars Schuhe, then we have an apostrophe after the S. Okay, so we can use then this almost like the English with an apostrophe S for belonging. Um, so could I say like Karls Schwester? Ja, genau, das ist richtig. So Karls sister and so on. Right, so coming back to des Vaters, um, is there more that we need to know about you know, when we put this extra S on the end? Well, as we discussed earlier, masculine and neuter nouns receive uh, an S at the end when they are in the genitive, but there are obviously uh, exceptions. So, for example, uh, die Blätter des großen Baums. So, the leaves of the big tree. Mm -hmm. We can add an E in there, die Blätter des großen Baumes. Yeah, okay, so that a makes it nicer. a bit more... <laughs> Yes, it makes it sound nicer, a bit more dramatic, maybe. Yes. So, and uh, nouns ending in an S or uh, an SZ or an X or a Z, they need the extra E um, for pronunciation. So, for example, we have Fuß. Yeah, they are Fuß. And if I speak of the bone of the foot, so they are Knochen. Des rechten Fußes. Right, so the bone of the right foot. Yes. Okay, because otherwise it would be Fuß, and that's yeah. a bit too much. <laughs> Sounds yeah? a bit too much, yeah. Okay. Or if we speak about the taste of a wild mushroom, yeah, der Geschmack des wilden Pilzes. Okay, so that you're, you're adding in an E to avoid it sounding like Pilzes. Yes. So while we can say des Baums, We must say des Pilzes. Right, okay, I get that. So, yeah, that, that makes sense. Andrea, there's one thing that's coming to mind, and it is when we added, I think, an N to the word Herr. Was that for the, the accusative case? Uh, so this is also in the genitive. Right. Um, for example, uh, die Krawatte des höflichen Herrn. So the, the the tie of the höflichen? Uh, polite. Polite man. So you don't say des höflichen Herres? Nein. Nein, des Herrn. Yeah? Does that happen with other words? Uh, yes, we saw it earlier with Junge. Yeah, des Jungen. 
Okay. Ah, okay, die, right. Mm -hmm. Die Schuhe des Jungen. Des Jungen, right. But it's really just very few cases. Yeah, okay, so we will learn them as we go, as it were. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so we, we've been dealing with the genitive, and this is been a little, well, it's been quite a lot to take in, to be perfectly honest. But uh, I think what would always help is when we see some of this in context. And that's exactly what we're going to do after our break. We'll be back in just a moment then with a dialogue featuring, hopefully, lots of genitives. In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break German Season 3, we're also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your German. That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode where Andrea will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the topic of each lesson. And of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakgerman.com and follow the links for Season 3 there. Okay, today we are dealing with the genitive and we're just about to listen to a dialogue which features maybe one or two genitives. Andrea, can you explain a little about the dialogue before we hear it? Yes, so we're going to hear Jana and uh, Karin, and they're both living in a Wohngemeinschaft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So shared and accommodation. Exactly, and uh, they start tidying up uh, the flat a bit because it was untidy. Okay, let's have a listen then. Oh Mann, ich bin gestolpert und habe fast die schöne Vase der Vermieterin zerbrochen. Schön, naja, das ist wohl eine Frage des Geschmacks. Vielleicht sollten wir mal ein bisschen aufräumen. Ich bin vorhin auch beinahe auf Peters Sonnenbrille getreten. Ja, ich will mich ja nicht anhören wie Martins Mutter, aber es ist schon sehr unordentlich. Ja, stimmt schon. Komm, wir legen gleich los. Wessen Socken sind denn das? Die riechen so wie die Socken meines Vaters. Keine Ahnung. Wenn sie so riechen, sollten wir uns ihrer gleich entledigen. Hier ist der Müll. Sind das die Ohrringe von Martins Ex-Freundin? Oh Mann, sie hat schon gedacht, jemand hat ihr die geklaut. Deswegen gab es richtig Zoff und sie ist aus der WG ausgezogen. Sie hätte einfach mal unter das Sofa ihres Freundes schauen sollen. Das kann Martin jetzt wieder gerade biegen. Weshalb stehen denn hier diese Pflanzentöpfe rum? Da gammelt ja schon etwas. Ah, das ist das Biologieexperiment unseres alten Mitbewohners. Das ist schon sicher zwei Jahre alt. Ich denke nicht, dass das noch unserer Aufmerksamkeit bedarf. Du hast recht. Ich bin ja eine Naturfreundin, aber der Geruch ist jetzt schon etwas zu viel des Guten. Ehrlich gesagt könnten wir einiges entsorgen. Der Ordnung willen. Genau. Ich mache gleich in der Küche weiter. Andrea, I have to say, how long is it since they tidied up? Yeah, it seems like a long time if they only <laughs> now found the biology experiment. <laughs> okay, I, there, there were a lot of words in there I definitely didn't understand on the first listening. Obviously, we can listen again. We're not going to go through the whole thing just now. We'll do that in our bonus episode. But can you perhaps give us a little bit of a summary here so that we can pick out some of the things that... that uh, in, I, I did hear someone's father's socks, but... Ja, <laughs> genau, <laughs> das ist there. richtig, das ist richtig. So, Jana and Karin live in a flat share, so a Wohngemeinschaft. It is very untidy and they decide to do something about it. After Jana tripped over something and nearly broke an expensive vase belonging to their landlady. And Karin admits having almost stepped uh, on another flatmate's sunglasses. Yeah, I heard the, the Sonnenbrille there. And they find smelly socks, but don't know <laughs> uh, whom they belong to. And they also find earrings that belong to the ex-girlfriend of one of their flatmates and uh, discuss how she thought, so the girlfriend thought, someone had stolen them. And there was some richtig zoff 
Yeah, I, I heard that. Is that like a fight? Um, no, it's just the Zoff is, is the Streit, so um, discussions, quarrels. Ah, okay. Yeah. Arguments. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Genau. Yeah. And what was the whole thing about the, the plants, the, the biology experiment? <laughs> yes, so they found uh, some mystery plants in the kitchen that used to belong to one of their former flatmates uh, that has now moved out. And it, it's a biology experiment, they think. Uh, they don't think they have to look after it anymore, and uh, but think that there's still lots of tidying to do, so they move on to the kitchen. Yeah, the, the the funny thing was when I heard uh, Karin at the end saying, um, I, "I'll I'll go into the kitchen in a minute." I thought they had done the whole flat by this time, but that's obviously just one room with all these things going wrong in it. I think it was just the living room. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Obviously, these are made up made up experiences, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see no more. Um, that is almost it for this episode. However, I do remember that there is. Noch eine Kleinigkeit. Yes, so today I have a nice genitive for you. Licht am Ende des Tunnels. Oh, right. So we're talking here about the, the light at the end, of, at the end of the tunnel. That's correct, yes. So is it der Tunnel or das Tunnel? Es ist der Tunnel. Right, so der Tunnel becomes des Tunnels. And is it die Licht am das Ende Licht. des Tunnels? Das Licht. Das Licht am Ende des Tunnels. You know, there's a, a musical, uh, an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical called Starlight Express. And it's very famously very popular in German-speaking places because it has been running in Bochum in Germany for many, many years uh, I don't know whether it's still running there, but it it, run, it ran in, in Bochum for many years, long after it finished running in the West End in London. And the final song in that musical in, in English is The Light at the End of the Tunnel. Um, so the German version is obviously Das Licht am Ende des Tunnels. Genau, sehr schön, sehr gut, yeah. That is where we're going to leave this episode of Coffee Break German. Of course, we're going to go through the dialogue in great detail in our bonus episode. And you can find that along with all the bonus materials for this course over at the Coffee Break Academy. Um, either go to coffeebreakacademy.com or simply go to coffeebreakgerman.com and follow the links for Season 3. Andrea, wie immer, vielen Dank. Vielen Dank, Marc. Und bis zum nächsten Mal. Bis bald. <laughs> You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved. 